Well, hello, this is Jeff Gadiosi, and you're on MisplacedStraws.com, where music comes to life. And my guest today, aside from being an incredibly talented musician, is also the producer of one of the most highly anticipated tours of the fall. Celebrating Bowie is about to hit the road, bringing all of David Bowie's incredible music, performed by an all-star cast, to theaters around the country. Please welcome Angelo Scrote Bundini. Welcome, Scrote. Hey there, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for taking the time. And before we talk about the tour, let's introduce you a little bit. Um, you have a really impressive jazz background, but what led you to Bowie and the Celebrating Bowie project? Yeah, um, actually, the, the Celebrating David Bowie, we're, we're the full name, we're the only project, uh, you know, touring group allowed to use his full name and the there title. You go. Yeah. <laughs> so we always put that out there. Take advantage uh, of it. <laughs> yeah. So with celebrating David Bowie, it, it's kind of uh, a funny way that I connected uh, all of this for me personally. Uh, I've been a long time fan, but I I started in jazz and uh, classical, um, and I always into experimental music. So I went to the University of North Texas, uh, was doing jazz performance studies there, which is a pretty heavy bebop school. And at that point, um, I've gotten, gotten to a point I wanted to check out some other things, orchestral things, like electronic music. So I ended up switching over to contemporary 20th century orchestral music and, and a, you know, new electronic music. And so... You know, that's, you know, Stravinsky up to, you know, current, that, that mm-hmm. kind of world. <laughs> and so I'm in that. And then coming out of that, um, the guitar play, i into noise music as well. Mm-hmm. So the feedback and kind of transistor, it's all kind of, kind of the same world fishing around there. Uh, and so getting out of, uh, college, I looked at the landscape and, you know, I was asked if I wanted to be a professor. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, man, I kind of, I'm into live music and I actually kind of want to rock out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, but I didn't have a connection or see a path for me in, in popular music or rock music, particularly at that time. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I heard Bowie. I was always a fan. I started noticing like, this good, the different guitar players doing things, and I like what? Okay, what's that? And then I started checking it out. And then I heard uh, I was in a record store, and I heard they put on a record. And it was a new King Crimson record, Discipline, at the time. Mm-hmm. I thought, wow, who's that? What is that? <laughs> what's going on there? And then. The same week, unrelated, uh, Talking Heads album Remain in Light uh, was out of, uh, came across to me. It's probably out of a year or so, but mm-hmm. I discovered it. And there's Adrian Blue playing uh, solo on the Great Curve song on there. And I was like, wow, who is that? Then I find out that that's the guy from that King Crimson thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I'm like, look a little deeper and go, oh, and he played with Bowie. Like, wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's kind of, yeah, then I, that dawned on me how I would fit in the scene, mm-hmm. you know. And then that helped for forever with Bowie. There's always a spin with guitar players, you know, and the cool writing and the style and everything. So Bowie is actually my entry into the, that world of music. Mm-hmm. And um, I never imagined, aimed, or thought I would actually be playing Bowie music with Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> I still have to go, okay, wh- what? I, well, how did that happen? Mm-hmm. I was doing something else. <laughs> but um, it kind of it all came about naturally, and here we are, you know, a few years into it and uh, having a good time. And, you know, people love uh david's music and we just try to I, I try to bring on the best artists and players in the world to do it uh some justice and respect 
and uh, yeah, we have a good time. So we'll we'll just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and now, production-wise, you're putting this together with the legendary Miles Copeland. But yeah. How did you guys go about finding and choosing the right musicians for the tour? And aside from Adrian, who makes up this touring band with you? Yeah, it's a funny thing. So I, when this first, I started this in 2016, <laughs> and it was going to be one show in Hollywood for uh, artist friends and musician friends. We were all kind of heartbroken with David's passing. So that included, you know, people who played with David and, you know, like Seal and you McGregor. And Mm -hmm. uh, so pretty high profile, but it wasn't meant to be anything. It's just people getting together. That went viral around the world. So all these inquiries came in. And I thought, well, this will be, you know, this is crazy, you know, uh, Gary Oldman's a good pal, and he's a bother time and close with David. And we talked about it. And he's like, well, let's go all over the world and do it. I was like, hold <laughs> on, Chief. <laughs> That's a big undertaking. I said, well, if Adrian Blue will, will do it, I'm game. <laughs> I'll put it together. So I contacted Adrian and said, absolutely. And, uh, and then I rented by the estate, make sure they, we weren't stepping on toes and they were like, they were cool with it. And then started putting it together. And David has fans on and off stage worldwide. So I was actually turning people away, mm. even in prominent names. Um, because uh, when producing a show, it's got to gotta have a vision and it's all got to kind of fit naturally. Can't kind of force people in. And also have to weed people out. Some people would come to it and they just see an opportunity to perform or promote mm-hmm. something. And and I totally get that and respect that. But I want to keep it to people who, as big as they are, are David Bowie fans. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And so that's always been the aim. And then it's kind of fumbled forward with me running the whole thing on and off stage. And we made a way around the world all over the place uh five continents and 17 countries and then when COVID hit we were about to do this tour with pretty much the same lineup mm. and then COVID hit didn't know what was going on I thought well maybe that's the end of it okay maybe that's done and then I heard about Miles had been producing tours and reached out and uh it was such a perfect fit <laughs> and so they uh his team does what I don't really want to do. <laughs> I knew what they don't want to do. <laughs> and so it's so far it's a match made in heaven. And um so this is actually a lineup before him, but also like now that we've been working together a little bit, we've been able to come together on reaching out to other artists together. And, mm-hmm. you know, miles, you don't get any heavier than that. Right. So <laughs> but that helps the stamp of approval. And uh, it also, uh, you know, his team and what they all do take the load off of my back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so I can be, kind of, uh, you know, concentrate solely on creative, stuff like that. So, and, yeah. it, does it ever surprise you just, the enduring legacy and the public's desire for, you know, to hear this music and see these guys go out and play it. Yeah, it's, it always does. And then, you know, I, uh, so I'm a, you know, most of my life fan of Bowie. I always thought mm-hmm. I'd get a record. I don't care what it is. I'll learn something. Even if I don't, you know, mm-hmm. connect with a tune, so I'll learn something from him, you know? And so, when he passed away, uh, that night I remember somebody uh, broadcasting he had 26 studio albums. And I thought, wow, that's crazy. You had mm-hmm. 26 albums? How many do I have? And I looked, <laughs> I had 23. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and I thought, wow, okay. And then you saw the outpouring. And then I was in a very, very unique position, and still am, uh, of having my foot 
Uh, I hung out with him once. I played, uh, recorded, and played with uh, many of his band members uh, at that time when he passed away. Uh, and so I had a, one foot in Bowie world and one foot out, you know. So I was able to be in a spot where I could uh, approach your music without, you know, agenda mm-hmm. or, you know, a half fan and half pro, not, you know, some, like say like some kind of agenda from the past, <laughs> <laughs> just kind of looking at it flatly and going, here it is. And I thought, uh, when it came about touring, I thought, well, why do this? Okay. It's a huge undertaking. I could feel the fans, especially that first year, really almost two years, needing something to gather around, Mm -hmm. just like we did on the first show in L.A. So I saw it as an opportunity to raise some money for charity and give give fans something. And that was my sole agenda. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but with that, you know, it takes a lot of work and everything going. So by the time we get on stage, I'm fli- I had been working on the tour, connected with fans, but focused on work. So get on, get on the tour and get on stage and then look out in the audience. You see everyone singing along. <laughs> and it takes me right back to when he passed away yeah. and the emotion they have. And then it kind of makes me emotional. <laughs> then I look at oh, Adrian yeah. and we'll mm-hmm. sing Life on Mars and we're right back mm-hmm. into the emotional space of losing a night of fan, you know. And I suspect that'll happen on this tour and it's been five, six <laughs> years now. So, yeah, And for the show itself, I mean, it, you, know, you mentioned the 26 studio albums. There's such a vast catalog and there's yeah. so many distinct eras. I mean, how do you go about choosing a set list do you try to encompass everything do you do tours where it just you know concentrates on certain eras well that's kind of uh that's kind of a happy circumstance of who who i am marrying the situation because i'm well known for being a music director and band leader who takes a big complex catalogs and performers, amounts of performers, and make sense of it in a, in, a, in a way that the performers can see it and relate to it and makes it simple for them and then encompasses, you know, this whole catalog. Mm-hmm. So I've kind of taken away advantage of that and not debated it, but didn't want to go where it's like just a 70s period yeah. or an 80s period. Um, I'm not saying we won't do that in the future, but the, right now I still think that I feel like if we don't hit later Bowie, uh, then we're leaving out people <laughs> <laughs> who want to show and same vice versa, you know. Mm-hmm. And so uh, in you know, the 80s, Les Sands, biggest period, biggest sales he ever had, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to leave that out. And I love all that stuff. So um, this one and everyone, every tour has been a different setup, but it has covered uh, m- something off most of his records on mm-hmm. every tour. You know, it's a little light, more weight towards one way or another on each mm-hmm. tour. You know, <laughs> but. And now for yourself and you know Adrian and Todd Rundgren's on this tour. Yeah. Do you guys have like? favorites that may not have made the set list, but they're, you know, kind of your personal favorites that you want to work in there? Yeah, that that happens every time. Mm-hmm. And that is the, the the unusual thing with uh, uh, David, because he's got five decades of <laughs> popular <laughs> tunes. <laughs> and it's like, wow. I mean, we're doing... Uh, incredible amount of material and I've arranged some medley segues mm-hmm. even to pull in more material um, and uh, but even with that I always see a good dozen of like ah, ah we can't do that I'm about to 
<laughs> deny people. Hey, yeah, last time I did this, I love songs. Oh man, got to change it up and get some of these <laughs> in, or <laughs> you know. So and that that keeps it fun for us and keeps it fun tour to tour. I think <laughs> for for people coming out, the, they'll never know what we're doing. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you this. I'll, I'll be catching the show uh, in New Haven, Connecticut. And I'm oh, up good. here in Connecticut. And, yeah. and just throwing it out there, my favorite song ever is Win off of Young Americans. So just, just oh, yeah. putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, well, you just might be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's, it's, it's things like that. that mm-hmm. David never played Win on tour. No. No. You know, and we actually did it around the world in 2017 mm-hmm. with, I brought on the gospel choir at every stop. Oh, wow. And so we had the uh, Harlem gospel choir in New York. We had the London Cabrino mm-hmm. gospel choir, which is like the one <laughs> of the UK. Uh, we had them in London. Uh, incredible. We even had a gospel choir in Tokyo. Oh, my God. Um, so we did win on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, all those and it's spectacular you know and now you as the tour goes on you're kicking off uh october 6th on the west coast and working your way yeah. through the country now you have a few special guests announced like in chicago ava cherry uh, yeah david will be speaking of she was on win yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> and thomas dolby will be popping yeah. up at the Maryland shows. I mean, do you anticipate yeah. any other surprises as the tour goes on? I, we just announced at 10 a.m. that Joe Bonamassa is going to join us in, in Beverly Hills. Oh, really? Um, yeah. He, I just uh, sent a note out, hey, man, you want to jump up for some mm. Steve Ray Vaughn kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he was all over it. And uh, so he's going to join us in Beverly Hills. Um mm. Also, Eric Skirmerhorn, who played with Iggy Pop, and then mm-hmm. went on to play with Tin Machine with David, mm-hmm. uh, tour with him. He's joining us at Beverly Hills, and a young keyboardist player, keyboard player, just got through with another person that we worked with, Pat Metheny. Mm-hmm. Um, this keyboard player is jumping up with us. So there's different things that will pop up and be announced as we go. Uh, with COVID, we had the pull back a bit on that. I was ready to fill out every stage. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> COVID protocol. <laughs> so we actually had to pull some people back. <laughs> so, oh, I would man, we're going to do it next time. Yeah. Because, <laughs> so that was a bit of a bummer. But yeah, people will pop up. It'll be, there'll be some really good surprises along the way. And I have to ask, is there maybe some confusion? You mentioned how you're the only project out there using his full name, celebrating yeah. David Bowie. And yeah. when this project first started, you had quite a few Bowie alums involved, most notably right. Mike Garson. And right. there seemed to be a split with Mike and some of the other alums forming their own production. Right. You, why aren't those guys involved anymore? And do you get worried at all about kind of confusing the marketplace as to which version of the oh, band yeah. is out there. Yeah, that was a uh, a drag, and I tried to uh, – I see, I wasn't going to keep going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um, I kind of got pulled back into it. Uh, I was just going to do the international date in 2017 mm-hmm. and had Mike and uh, Earl Slick on mm-hmm. as well. Um, and uh, a few other different Bowie alum. And then when we finished, they wanted to keep going. Uh, and they tried to to relaunch, and I was going to go back to what I was doing. Uh, but they couldn't get off the ground. And finally, I said, okay, let me do, let me do it this way. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and I, uh, Adrian was on the whole time, and I brought Mike, back on and Jerry Leonard I think Mike just oh Mike Jerry and Carmine so mm-hmm. we did Europe and then uh, that version and then I couldn't do the US so we brought Slick back on and so it's like ever shifting and mm-hmm. then at the end of that they wanted to keep going in their own direction Mike wanted to lead, lead his own band yeah. 
um, and kind of be centered around him. And I didn't want it centered around anyone. <laughs> so I want to be about David, not band, but with yeah. band members. And so they they charge off, and fortunately, they picked decided to pick a similar name and kind of use a lot of our you know, wording and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And so it's like, man, don't do that. That'll just <laughs> you know confuse everybody. And so, but I kind of went that route, and then they kind of kept going and wanted to uh, write it all out, play as much as they possibly could. And, it, and you know, people started falling off. Mm-hmm. Um, where I didn't want it to make it, it's not a job for us. <laughs> um, where I think that was more of them, their group was kind of more sidemen, mm-hmm. continue to work. Where on our group, it's all people who are busy with their own careers. And I don't even... It's a marvel to me this day that I can get these people all in one place at the same time. Because <laughs> if you know Todd, Todd, Adrian, Angela Moore never stop touring. <laughs> yes, yes. Ever. They tour all year long mm-hmm. and stuff. We all have albums coming out. I have a new album coming out that will be on this tour. Actually. Oh, great. And Adrian just released a new album. Todd got mm-hmm. a new album. The first mm-hmm. single's with Adrian. <laughs> And they got together after we put them together for celebrating David Bowie in Iceland. Mm-hmm. So it's a funny, you know, mix match and how it all happens. And then Royce actually was just on tour as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. And uh, so it's a gr- it's a really really crazy busy group. So we we can't really nobody looks at it as a career or a job or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's just something we like to do. Uh, we love the music. We all love David. And it just feels right. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, so. we've been spending some time here with Scrote, and we're talking about the Celebrating David Bowie Tour, which uh, kicks off in a couple of days here in early October runs through mid-November all over the country. Um, as I said, I will catch you guys uh, October 21st here in Connecticut. Can't wait for the show. Yeah. It, it's been pleasure talking with you, and best of luck on this tour. And I look forward to catching up with you in a couple of weeks. Yes, thanks so much. It'll be, uh, it'll be great to see you out there. And uh, I've been looking for a particular New Haven. I haven't played there since the 90s. <laughs> so coming back through uh that's going to be fun and uh we start just in a couple rehearsals in a couple hours and then our first show in San Diego is just about sold out so fantastic it's going to be a journey and uh we'll get to New Haven ready to go ready for you we'll see you then my friend thank you okay, so much for taking so much. the time yep. you bet Bye.